We're going to start off with 2 Peter chapter 3. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days what Satan's trying to do with our world and what he's going to do to bring in the one world uh, order, one world religion. So Stephen Hawking, as we all know, he has passed away. And he came up with this argument to disprove the existence of God, actually, where it's gravity. So he believes that because of gravity, we literally came out of nothing, so there is no need for God. He also gave a different scientific argument, and he gave a scientific suggestion, where sometime in the future, he is fearful of AI artificial intelligence. He predicted that AI, that because of its advancement in technology, AI could take advantage against mankind, betray humankind sometime in the future and hurt the world. He also gave another scientific statement where he believed that sometime in the future our world will be destroyed because of climate change he believed and predicted somewhere around 2066, 2066, that the world will be destroyed because of the heat being so intense through climate change. He also gave one more statement where he, let's see, he predicted about artificial intelligence. He mentioned about the world being destroyed. And then here's a really controversial one, aliens. So he gave a scientific statement where there could be life in outer space, and that these aliens, when they meet our planet, he was actually very fearful of them. Because these other beings could come to our planet, take over, and colonize. So he was very fearful about that one. Because it is in the nature of the universe, and it is within nature itself, where beings will, whenever they go to new planets or new nations, new territories, what they will tend to do is that they will exploit and colonize. I mean, we see that today as well. A fierce world of capitalism. We've seen that throughout mankind's thousands of years of histories. Creatures always done that throughout history. So that's what he was fearful about. Now, we're going to see how these four things can actually be very close to the Antichrist eventually and the, his new world order, one world religion. And you got to understand this. It's not just religion. It's also science. The Antichrist will take advantage of science, and there will be scientists out there who will follow the Antichrist. It's not just religion. So first of all, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. How close are we about this world being destroyed? Well, the Bible actually told you that the world itself will explode, that the heat will be so intense that it will explode. The Bible actually predicted that. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which, notice, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall, what, melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Notice right here that the Bible predicted that the world will melt and burn up. Look at Revelation 20. Revelation 20. We can guess when this will take place. Look at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 9. Revelation chapter 20 verse 9. So the world being destroyed, we can see that. According to 2 Peter 3 and Revelation 20. Revelation 20 and 2 Peter chapter 3. When will this take place? After the millennium, 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ, which is after the tribulation. Look at verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. So notice, on the breadth of the earth. And the fire of God came down, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. 
Notice that when this fire came down, the earth is suddenly gone. Look at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So Stephen Hawking, when he predicted that sometime around 2066, uh, that the, our world would be destroyed because of intense heat, climate change, this is something to think about. And that's why we're so close to the rapture. The world being melted away with fervent heat is supposed to take place after the millennium, which is after the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. But the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ is after the tribulation, the end times. And the rapture is before the tribulation. So here's the thing, if the earth was supposed to melt away by 2066, I mean, you gotta realize this, we're already long past that. Well, we should be already long past the tribulation and during the millennium. So that shows that we're very, very close. We're very, very close toward the time of the end because we have not seen the tribulation yet or the rapture. So it should be sometime any moment, you gotta realize. So Stephen Hawking's prediction, you gotta realize, his prediction is showing us how close we are in any moment now for the rapture to hit and the Antichrist to set up his kingdom. But let's also look at aliens, what he predicted. He was fearful that they would take over our world. Look at Revelation chapter 11, Revelation chapter 12, excuse me, Revelation chapter 12. The Bible told you that there will be other beings from outer space, and they will come down upon the world, and they will take over the rule, the world. They're going to colonize, rule over the world. But the Bible is more specific than Stephen Hawking. The Bible shows that actually that these quote unquote aliens are going to lie to mankind and say that we can all live in harmony together and mankind will revere and actually worship these aliens. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 12. And notice in verse nine, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out, where? Into the earth. And notice, and his angels were cast out with him. Look at verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Look at that, the universe. The Bible saying, hey, rejoice outer space, the universe. Why? Because in verse nine, those quote unquote aliens, Satan and his angels were cast out of the universe. That's why the universe can rejoice. But the, those aliens are landing on the earth. So even though the universe will rejoice, who's gonna be in sorrow? The earth. Look at this, keep reading. But whereas from the universe, it's the earth now. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath a short time. Look at that. So he, here now we're seeing scientific statements. So it's not just a biblical tale and it's not no longer just religion. This is science now from Stephen Hawking. So he predicted that sometime in the future that aliens could come down and take over the planet. The Bible and the Bible was already what? Thousands of years already told you that. Amazing. Who says that Bible is not a science book, man? That Bible's amazing. The world being destroyed, the Bible already predicted that. But now let's talk about AI, artificial intelligence. Revelation 13, Revelation 13. Scientists have a scientific belief, scientific beliefs, rational, scientific, logical arguments that they have a right to be fearful of these things. So it's no longer religious fear. The Bible telling you, you should have a right to fear of these events happening. It's no longer religion stating it. Now we're looking at science now, Stephen Hawking. So Stephen Hawking predicted that AI, they could betray mankind and it can actually harm them in return. But he gave, he gave an interesting question. Could they benefit mankind more? or could they betray and hurt mankind more? And the Bible predicted that. There will be a technology that's supposed to benefit mankind even more. 
but in return it's actually going to betray them and hurt mankind. What is that? Look at Revelation chapter 13. We're going to look at verse 16. And he, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a what? Mark. But this mark is not just some kind of ordinary tattoo. This is a technology system. Why? Because notice how it connects to credit cards, to money, to technology like Bitcoin. Look at this. Mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So it's like an, it's like an implant inside. But keep reading. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Now, do you see that? That matches really well with credit cards, like a mark, and it has a name, has a number. I mean, look at that. And you can't buy or sell unless you have this. Verse 18, the infamous 666. Let hear his wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Look at Revelation 16. Revelation 16. So we see right here the mark of the beast, a technology where mankind is supposed to benefit out of it where you can buy and sell. That's what the Antichrist will propose. But look, this technology will betray them in return. Look at Revelation chapter 16. And notice what the Word of God states right here. You'll notice in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the man which had the what? Mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now notice that these people who have the mark of the beast, what happens to these people? You're going to notice that at verse 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. You'll notice that these people who had the mark of the beast, they received what? They received sores and pains. That technology didn't shield them, help them out in life. It actually betrayed them where the Lord God has to cast judgment upon them. And the mark actually becomes now a sore. Now, what's pretty interesting is that when you study the Bible about the mark and about leprosy and spot, they show you weird and strange stuff. I'm not going to give a teaching on this, but basically the mark of the beast can provide you leprosy, actually. So this mark of the beast they're going to have is going to betray them where they're going to receive leprosy and sores. But I'm not going to get into that. Maybe some other time in the future video. We're going to now look about gravity here. Now, here's the thing about Stephen Hawking is that he believes that we don't have to believe a God who created the universe. Why? Because gravity, which is some kind of force itself, it actually created the universe. So basically, the whole universe did come out of nothing. Why? Because it came from gravity. And gravity has pretty much what? Always been there or some kind of force has always been there. So because of that, it can produce and create all of mankind. But look at the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. You know how the Antichrist can use this? Look at the book of Daniel, chapter 11. And then go to Revelation 13 as well. We're going to look at Daniel 11 and Revelation 13. You don't need the God of heaven, the Christian God, to worship mankind. You know why? Because there's this other being from outer space who is so evolved in the process of evolution that he is closely connected with some kind of force, a strange, powerful force that can give you power and life practically from nothing, pretty much. What are you talking about? Well, look at Daniel 11. Daniel 11, that book is way ahead of you. Look at Daniel chapter 11. You know what the Antichrist is going to worship? You know who the God, who this being is? Look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Look at this now. Daniel chapter 11, and we will read verse 37. Verse 37. 
Neither shall he, that's the Antichrist, regard the God of his fathers, see, rejecting the Christian type of God, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God. See that? He's going to reject all gods of this world. And pretty much that's what a lot of atheist scientists are trying to do. There's no such thing as any sort of God. But look at this. But in his estate shall he honor the who? God of who? Forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Look at that. So notice right here that the Antichrist will be connected to the God of forces. You know what's dangerous about that for atheist scientists, Stephen Hawking and all those guys? Because they may not believe any sort of God in this world or the Christian God. But here's the thing is that they can just go by labels. They can think that the Antichrist, this being, because he is so connected with some kind of force or gravity in the universe, that pretty much it can be a God. You know, if you're an atheist scientist, you're not going to believe in the supernatural realm. So instead of the supernatural realm, you refer to it as a scientific realm and just label it, just term it as a label, practically, a god. And what they're going to do, you'll notice, is that they'll all follow this Antichrist because why? Because you don't need a Christian god. This being came from the process of evolution and mother nature somewhere out in the universe and through millions and billions of years, it produced a superior being called the Antichrist from a powerful force. So there's your answer. So Stephen Hawking, scientists, you got to realize they can follow the Antichrist and it's not just religion. This Antichrist is such a genius being. He's going to bridge religion and science together. Where scientists will see this as a scientific process, religions themselves will see it more as a supernatural religious process. But hey, who cares? It's just labels, right? That's what our world is talking about today. Religions have a label for it. Scientists have a label for it. But those are just labels. They just mean the same thing. We all worship. We all follow and believe the same thing.